But anyway, the other point, the other reason I brought this, uh, this proof for you is this one. I want to actually give you another demonstration in why this proof, I mean, what exactly happening in this proof. And for that, I need to put it back down. And I want to bring this picture again. Look at this picture. Can you tell me what's happening geometrically here? Geometrically, geometrically, what happens is this. Vector A, here's my vector A. Vector B, here's my vector B. Here's my vector B. Here's my vector B. Uh, I, wanna, I want to try to interpret what happens here in terms of the geometry. In terms of the geometry, what is said here is this. We take vector A, we subtract, subtract not the vector B itself, but some scalar multiple of the vector B, and take the length of that. And not only we take the length, I will just look at the length first. We take the length of that. If I want to visualize for you the values of this function, I should do something like this. I should do something like this. Here. This little different, this little different red arrows, they represent different possible scalings of my vector B. And when I take the difference, it will be these dashed lines from the tip of the A to each individual red arrow underneath. And the function here does nothing but takes the lengths of those dashed lines, isn't it? That's the function geometrically. Algebraically, it ends up to be just a parabola, by the way. But geometrically, these are the lengths like this. This length, this length, depending how, depending how you scale your vector b. Now, what do we do with this function in the proof? We found the value, t naught, this is the value, where my parabola hits the minimal value here, right? Where my parabola hits the minimal value. Now, if you reinterpret this in terms of the lengths, it means that we found the value, the value t to scale my b with, which will be the vector such that this length will hit the minimum. How can we interpret that geometrically? Which of those, which of those dashed lines will represent the minimal distance from the tip of the vector A to the line spanned by the vector. Do you mind if I give him give another person to, to say, yeah, go ahead. That's right. The vector, the value t here, it's the, this is exactly the numerical we need to scale my b with to end up here with the point sitting at the base of the perpendicular dropped from the tip of the vector A onto the vector b. You see how much we can discover from one little proof. So if I want to picture that, here. Here's my special vector, perpendicular. And the t naught value here, this is the value we need to scale my b with to come up with this vector underneath here, right under my perpendicular. This is a piece of the information we can't disregard. It's very helpful. It's not only for us helpful, it's helpful for many others. That's why mathematicians give, gave a name to this piece of the information. This vector, this red, let me just remove the dashed ones now. This vector, it's called the projection vector of the vector A onto the vector B. That's just a piece of a terminology which you have to remember. The piece of notation is this one. That's how it is written in your lecture notes. Projection of the vector A onto the vector B. And my proof, this beautiful proof of the cauchy schwarz inequality as a byproduct, free of charge, give us, free of charge, yeah, free of charge. They give, it give us, sorry, it gives us the way to find this projection. All we have to do, we have to take the vector b and scale it by this fantastic value t naught down here. This is a, you don't have to repeat this proof any, every time you need to find the projection. It's better to remember that formula, and here it is. So we have to scale b with the t naught, and that's the result of that scaling. So this object is called the projection of A onto B.